Hello and welcome to the latest BCIS Outlook for Construction webinar. Um, before we start, some small elements of housekeeping. So, as usual, please feel free to ask any questions you have throughout the webinar um, using, using the chat box. Uh, I'll get through um, as many as, as those as possible um, at the end of the session. For those questions that we do not get around to addressing um, during the webinar, we will be continuing the discussion uh, using the BS BCIS LinkedIn group afterwards. Um, also, this session will be recorded um, and made available on BCIS online. So in case you encounter any technology problems, please don't worry, you will still get a chance to watch um, and ask questions after this, this event. Um, when leaving the session today, you will be prompted to, to give us some feedback. Um, the feedback will help us to make sure we're delivering what you want <clears throat> in the future. Um, so please do take the time to answer. Also, do let us know in the survey if, if you have any topics that you'd like us to, to focus on for, for future events. So if we have a quick look uh, at the agenda for today, um, as ever over the, over the last... Uh, Last few webinars <clears throat> seems to be a fairly fast moving picture um, with, with things almost changing on a daily basis. Um, but generally, while, while inflation may be calming, um, the base rate is remaining stubbornly high and the cost of borrowing directly impacts investment levels in construction um, and output, output is, is, is falling as a, as a result of that. Um, over the last few quarters, um, indeed probably for most of last year, we've been discussing stagflation, greedflation, um, indeed inflation was a much discussed topic throughout last year. Um, so today we're going to look at what the prospects are for, for 2024 um, and try and address the question, um, is this the new normal? Um, and, 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 and to look at that we'll, we'll examine the current inflationary pressures in construction, looking first at uh, the forecasts of, of future demand levels. Um, we'll then take a look at cost and price movement in construction, um, including any wage growth, uh, and then draw some conclusions. And right at the end, we'll, we'll take some questions. Right, bef before we get going, um, let's take a bit of time just to, to set the scene. Um, I mean, over the last few years, we, we really seem to have been lurching from, from one crisis to the next. Um, and the recent conflict in the Middle East uh, is, is, is likely to add to the impacts still being felt from, from earlier crises. Um, and if we add in that 2024 is an election year, um, not just in the UK, but uh, in quite a, few, quite a few countries across the world, um, that's likely to introduce even more uncertainty. Um, so what's happening at the moment? I mean, as, as with the wider economy, um, construction output is, is stagnating um, and the latest GDP figures sort of con confirm, confirm that output is, is hovering around zero. Um, we have what, monthly uplifts and then monthly downturns. But if you average it out over the last, uh, last uh, few years, we're, we're sort of hovering around um, no, no growth at all. Um, and that persistent low growth seemed to be becoming uh, a bit of a characteristic. Um, on some good news, um, the volatility in, in materials prices uh, certainly calmed during 2023 um, and labour became the, the topic of the year with substantial increases in, in, in labour costs um, and resulting skill shortages uh, witnessed by, by many company, companies in the, in, in the sector. Um, on, on a positive note, these now seem to be abating um, and that's as a result of falling demand levels. Um, given the weather conditions over the last month or so um, and the Christmas shutdown, um, coupled with the, the lag in reporting statistics, it's highly likely that construction is currently in recession, in my, in my opinion. Um, although 
that might not get reported uh, in, in the official data until later in the year. So we set the scene, um, what's been happening in the recent past, now let's take a look um, at, at the outlook for construction. So first off, we'll, we'll, we'll take a look at um, the current inflationary drivers uh, for construction, and to do this, we'll use a combination of, of both BCIS and, and ONS data. So if, if we first take a look at construction output, um, and you can see from the chart that while total output remains above pre-crisis levels, um, the growth recently seems to be flatlining. Um, and indeed, the, the most recent data indicates a fall in, in total output. It, uh, it seems that the recessionary pressures are starting to feed through to construction. Um, the cost of living crisis is, is impacting the R&M sector, uh, and the cost of borrowing is, is, is obviously having an effect on, on the new work sector, with financing costs becoming a major barrier to investment, and, and construction, certainly new construction, is a response to levels of investment. Um, with growth overall in the UK economy expected to be subdued um, for, the, for the next two years, um, BCIS is forecasting construction output to fall this year, um, mainly because of de decreases in, in, in housing work. Um, but we expect it output to recover slowly from 2025 onwards. As we saw in the, in the previous chart, um, new work output has started to turn down. Um, and our, our forecast is, if we, if we look at this current slide, we can see um, new, new construction output um, by, by the various subsectors. Um, and overall, we expect new work output growth uh, to fall by about 5% through, through 2024. Um, and this is primarily due to a uh, continuing decline in housing output. Um, high interest rates and, and a, a relatively stagnant economy have been affecting, affecting private investment. So we expect private industrial, private commercial, private housing um, output to, to, to bear the brunt of any declines in new work. Um, however, despite the constraints on public spending, the programme investment in hospitals, schools and prisons uh, should, should see output maintained in the public non-housing sector, um, and some of that will be, will be RAC related. Um, and infrastructure output, which is the sort of yellowy orange line, um, remains at historically high levels, although we predict some slowdown in growth during the, the forecast period through to 2028. However, there is a robust pipeline of work um, which should see output levels main, maintained, um, assuming that the, the pipeline is realised. Um, BCIS is optimistic that the government will continue to see infrastructure investment as a key lever to economic growth and, and maintain levels of investment in that sector. Um, in terms of private commercial, we expect output to flatline through 2024 as a whole. Um, and while we do not expect any further dramatic declines uh, in, in the sector, we expect recovery will be, will be slow. A stagnant economy is likely to mute growth for commercial space. Um, but changing environmental and working requirements will likely see some growth from major refurbishments in, in, in commercial work. Um, it's not all gloom and doom. Uh, uh, a broad recovery in output from, from 2025 looks highly likely, given, given the current conditions. And I guess that's a caveat to all of this. Um, in fairly fast-moving situations, um, we obviously are can, can be overtaken by events. Um, so, yeah, when, when, we, when, we, uh, <laughs> when we discuss our forecasts and predictions, um, they are obviously done with the best intentions, um, but sometimes situations overtake us. Um, so, yeah, we, we, we expect a broad recovery in, in, in construction output from, from next year, um, and growth, with growth predicted to return uh, to, to the two largest sub-sectors of of private housing and, and infrastructure. Um, some, of, some of this will obviously be dependent on the outcome of the election later in the year. Um, but overall, we, we are forecasting that total new work output is, is expected to grow by about 8% uh, 
over the forecast period through to 2028. If we now take a look at the repair and maintenance uh, sector, um, certainly look at r and output, which has been a key driver um, of, of output growth over the, over the last uh, couple of years. Um, you know, following sustained growth in, in, in repair and maintenance work, um, the r &M sector has started to turn down. Um, we're predicting all sectors to stagnate uh, over the next 12 months. Due, largely due to affordability issues, um, but we are predicting a muted recovery in 2025, driven by increases in, in, in housing repair and maintenance work. Um, Non-housing repair and maintenance work uh, remains, remains relatively steady as, as RAC remedial work comes through. Um, the existence of RAC in public buildings will likely require many of the affected buildings to be rebuilt or at least have significant interventions over the next few years which we predict will result in the increased levels of output, certainly both, uh, both R&M and, and some new work. If we now take a quick look at our summary of, of growth predictions um, by, by sector, um, following the latest uh, uh, analysis of the latest data, um, last time, presented this chart, which I think was in September. Um, the, the, the chart was a, a sea, of, sea of red, um, and this time there's only, there is only one, one red sector, um, which is obviously good news. Um, perhaps, perhaps we are turning, turning the corner. Um, as probably expected, new housing is going to be the main drag on activity over the, over the next year or so. Um, with repair and maintenance output in housing and public non-housing expected to pick up over the next 12 months. Um, two green arrows, um, but, but growth in, in, in most other sectors is expected to be relatively flat through, through this year. So in, in, in output terms, um, the picture definitely seems to be um, a little bit more positive than um, the last webinar we did. Um, so demand levels look like they'll certainly be recovering through 24 um, and will obviously pick up um, fairly significantly uh, in 2025. If we now switch to, um, to looking at costs, um, building costs uh, as, as measured by the BCIS General Building Cost Index arose 2.5% in the year to um, for Q 2023, and this is continuing the downward trend from the recent peak of 14.5% of in the second quarter of 2022. The slowdown in the growth of construction cost is mainly attributed to the fall in materials cost inflation. Costs are predicted to rise by 15% over the next five years, which is significantly lower than um, what we've been experiencing uh, in, the, in the recent past. Um, if we now switch on to, to, to labour, um, uh, wage awards remain the main driver of the growth in, in, in overall costs uh, for the majority of, of the forecast period. Um, and now take a quick look at, at tender prices, um, and that's the, uh, the, the, the green line on that chart. Tender prices, as measured by the BCIS Tender Price Index, uh, I followed a downward trend in 2023, um, falling from 8.6% in the first quarter um, to 3.5% in the fourth quarter. Um, so a significant drop. Um, looking ahead, we expect that falling demand this year will likely result in fewer opportunities um, and greater keenness to tender by contractors. Um, and as a result, we expect annual growth in tender prices to continue to ease, um, reaching, predicting that they'll reach around 2% um, at the end of 2024. Um, and indeed, it's not until uh, mid-2025 that uh, tender prices are likely to start rising faster than costs um, as, as capacity constraints reduce competition, given that demand's picking up then. Um, and over the over the forecast period, we're, we're expecting tender prices 
to, to rise by uh, around 17% over the next five years. Um, going forward, uh, the forecasts, I think it's worth noting that um, the forecast for both for, for growth in both uh, the general building cost index and the tender price index um, are relatively benign um, when, when compared to the recent past. So we've looked at general costs um, and, and, and tender prices. Now, if we take a look at uh, input costs, our forecast for, for input, input cost inflation, um, the second half of, of, of 2023 witnessed a marked slowdown um, in the demand for construction materials as, as, as construction output started to drop off um, and an overall fall in prices. So after four consecutive quarters of slowing growth, materials inflation entered negative territory um, at the end of 2023. So we're looking at some, some deflation um, with the annual change in the BCIS materials cost index uh, standing at uh, minus 0.7%. Um, and our prediction is that material costs will, will continue to decline. Um, and we're forecasting that uh, um, minus 2.2% um, drop off in material costs um, at mid-year, um, but then going on to, to, to exhibit some recovery later in the forecast period. Um, the slowdown in, in um, materials inflation was mainly driven by a fall in, uh, in the costs for, for oil, steel, aggregates and, and aluminium. However, it is worth noting that there's, there's some caution needed here. Um, we've, we've assumed that the conflict in the Middle East does not escalate beyond its current boundaries um, with the consequential impact on global trade. Um, so that's certainly something to bear in mind. I think what's happening in the Red Sea um, at the moment um, could well have uh, inflationary impacts if uh, uh, the cost of shipping increases and also there are um, ships having to be rerouted. Um, so there'll be delays in uh, oil deliveries, etc. So um, that's certainly something that we're going to be keeping abreast of over the next uh, few months. Um, so overall, BCIS forecasts the materials cost index to grow um, by a total of 11.2% uh, through to the end of 2028. So a significant um, drop off in, in, in material cost inflation uh, is currently evident. Um, so if we now switch on to, to labour costs, um, labour costs have, have, have taken over from materials costs as the, as the key cost driver in construction. Although I think most of it's already happened. Site rates um, have already risen in line with inflation um, and are likely to steady uh, this year. So taking it into consideration the wage agreements that are in place, uh, construction output forecasts and the prevailing macroeconomic conditions, uh, BCIS are predicting that the annual growth in its labour cost index will reach around 8% and that will be the peak um, mid, around mid 2024. Um, and, and then will slow thereafter to approximately 3% for the next three years. Uh, the annual growth is expected to return to the long-term trend of around 2.5% for the last year of the forecast period. So in total, um, in summary, BCI is forecasting the labour cost index to grow by a total of 18.7% uh, over the next five years, um, which is certainly um, well within the bounds of expectations um, in terms of looking at that chart. Um, um, just to confirm, um, our, our uh, findings and forecasts for the, uh, on the previous slide in terms of labour cost, we'll look now specifically at um, construction earnings. Um, and it certainly appears from, from, from the data that the growth in construction earnings appears to be easing. Um, the annual growth in the average weekly earnings index for construction shows a 5.8% increase uh, in the third quarter of, of last year. Um, that's the same level that was observed in the second quarter. Um, and at the same time, the all in Hayes BCIS site wage cost index shows site rates rising by around 2% in the third quarter. And that's down from 5.1% recorded in the second quarter.
Um, so it's, it appears that there's a declining trend evident in, in wage growth. Um, it is important to note that the Hayes BCIS site wage cost indices um, are produced using market data from Hayes recruitment. And these generally represent short term labor requirements for immediate fulfillment. Um, and because of this, uh, the, the indexes tend to be uh, slightly more volatile um, and faster to react to the changes in market conditions and other labor indices. Um, and I think you can see that in the chart. Um, the BCIS labor cost index increased by 6.8% during the same period, um, which was up from 4.7% in the second quarter of 2023. This increase is, is mainly attributed to the Construction Industry Joint Council wage awards, which came into effect in, in uh, July of last year. Um, and the wage awards agreed were, were sort of ranging between 6 and 8%. If we, if we now take a, a quick look at the BCIS Market Conditions Index, um, which is it's, it's currently forecast to grow by 1% compared to the previous quarter. Um, and that will result in a growth of 1% overall when compared with the year earlier. Um, and that's a bit of a change from pre previous um, webinars. When, when, Broadly speaking, when the market conditions index is rising, um, prices are rising faster than costs. And when it's falling, costs are rising faster than prices. So for the first time in a while, we're starting to see prices rising marginally faster than costs. Um, and, and generally, if you, if you look at the, uh, the forecast period, um, the, there's an increasing trend uh, in, in the market conditions index. Which, which suggests that prices are likely to lead costs over the next few years. I mean, given what we've just seen in the, in the previous um, few slides, I, I, I think that confirms that, that we've got costs coming down um, fairly significantly compared to, to the recent past. So it's, it's, it's worth remembering, though, however, that, that uh, we, we, we expect the MCI to remain relatively benign um, looking at that forecast, uh, uh, our predictions are um, pretty benign, um, certainly when compared, compared to the recent past. So if we take a quick look now at what might be driving the, the, the wage um, cost increases, um, and there are, on this chart it's quite difficult to read, but the, the two main categories driving uh, the positive annual growth in the uh, all in Hayes BCIS site wage cost index were, were unskilled and semi skilled labour, um, which had increased by 7.2%, and building trade skilled, um, which had increased by just under 5%. Um, the, the largest downward contribution came from the improver and semi skilled category, which was, which was down 5.5% uh, over, over the period. So Hayes also reported that, uh, that they had fewer construction job placements in, in the third quarter of 2023, um, so, which broadly suggests that, that the supply, labour supply issues um, are, now, are now easing. And this is likely to be a result of, of, of market demand softening. Um, so obviously we've got less construction on site, so less need for, uh, for, for labour. So we've, we've looked at the raw data um, and what the raw data is telling us. Um, but there's only so much the data can tell you given um, that there's a, usually a lag um, in, produ in producing that data. So it's always important, and we do, we do this at every webinar, that we, we, we try and get a view of what's actually happening on the ground. Um, so in the next couple of slides, we'll, we'll take a look at some of the comments made by members of, of our TPI panel at the latest meeting uh, in December, just to get an understanding of, of, of what's happening um, on, on the ground. And there are a few headings. The first one we'll look at is, is procurement. Um, and one of the same response contractors are now more inclined to bid for simpler projects. Um, and that's an aim to mitigate their uh, any cash flow problems. Um, and there are also significant risk premiums um, uh, being added for complex projects. 
there's a, a greater appetite for, for larger projects due to slowdowns and pauses, uh, but this isn't manifesting into lower tender prices yet, um, partly due to, to higher risk aversion. Um, another comment was that risk and uncertainty are still attracting significant premiums, uh, but that is now being overridden by the need to, to, to secure follow-on workload. Um, obviously, as demand softens, uh, contractors are looking to, to get their order books filled. Um, so in terms of, 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 of tender stages and, and tender tenders, contracts are being more selective on the tender routes they're willing to work, um, preferably two-stage or, or, or target cost contracts. Um, volatility is, is still being priced into fixed price contracts. Um, there is evidence of some improvement in the appetite for, for single stage tenders um, as, as, as market demand dictates. Uh, but contractors much generally much prefer negotiated outcomes. If we now look at um, comments made on, on packages that have uh, maybe been inflationary. Um, so, so the main packages have increased in costs um, include sprinklers, um, mechanical and electrical work, security, fire alarms, and, and m and &E fit out generally. Um, so these seem to be the packages that are, are, are still increasing in cost. Um, this comment sort of suggests that brickwork has flatlined um, in, in, in cost increases as largely due to a lack of house building opportunities. Um, another comment was related to the cost impact of, of carbon off, offsetting, um, which is being seen in, in higher rates for concrete. Um, but on a positive note, steel, steel is, is, is more competitive than, than the recent past. Um, another comment which we sort of found in the data that we looked at earlier was that pressures have generally moved from, from being commodity based to, to energy and labour driven. Um, if we look at particular trades where there might be pressures, um, overall pressures seem to be easing, um, although uh, that's a short term view, um, obviously long term skills and labour challenges remain in our sector. Um, and, and I guess one of, one, of the, one of the fears is that once demand picks up next year, um, we may end up with capacity problems if we, if we can't address the, uh, the, the long-term skills and, and, and labour shortages that we, we, we know are sort of under the surface. Um, so M&E, mechanical and electrical costs um, are still rising ahead of general building work costs. Um, and this could be um, because of larger wage increases um, for, for specialist labour. Um, and also uh, imported plant inflation for, for mechanical and electrical installations. Um, another comment was still seeing, seeing some short-term capacity issues, um, but, but nothing specific in terms of spikes. So we we'll now move on to particular subsectors, um, and I think this is something that everyone knows about now, slow down um, in residential uh, work is is releasing some of that some of that supply chain um, and this member was reporting it's easier to get subcontractors in some areas now due to to reduce house building activity um, public housing is benefiting from the slowdown in, in private housing which is which is freeing up resource um, and availability of the supply chain and that's one of the great things about construction is particularly um, subcontracting construction because you can switch from um, across sectors. Um, and in terms of other general comments uh, for, from, from panel members, um, there's, this is quite important, I think, problems with contractors being unable to secure performance bonds. There's a number of providers that are assessing that the building sector is becoming too risky and either limiting their exposure or withdrawing entirely from the market. Um, so that's quite an important note. Um, another comment was investors are looking for reasons to pause schemes um, due to the cost of borrowing, um, inflation and the upcoming general election. So that's something to certainly keep an eye on. 
Um, and insolvency um, and the insolvency risk is a concern, uh, not just for those managing the supply chains, uh, but also for those looking to fill tender lists who are sometimes faced with a less competitive environment. Um, and I think the insolvency issue has obviously started to tail off a bit, but I, you know, there, there, there were a lot of insolvencies during 2023. Hopefully that, that will, that will, uh, that will change for, for this year. Um, and finally, from the, from the panel members, um, there are signs that residential projects in London have passed through uh, the second stair redesign stage and will potentially be starting on site in, in, uh, in, in this year. Um, and, and obviously that's, that's good news because that took a big chunk of, uh, of development out of, out of the housing sector. So over the next couple of slides, we'll, we'll, we'll summarise what, what we've seen um, through both the data and uh, the anecdotal comments from TPI panel members. So the question we posed at the start was, is this, is this the new normal? Um, but I have to say, I, I think perhaps, but certainly this is a much more positive outlook than, um, than the ones we did last year. Um, having said that, the wider economy and, and, and the construction sector both show clear signs of a slowdown as the effects of monetary tightening continue to build. Um, but on a positive spin, the, the worst impacts of inflation appear to be diminishing, although we, we suspect that the CPI is likely to remain uh, above the Bank of England's target um, for, for the remainder of this year. Um, the question that everyone's asking at the moment is, is when the Bank of England might start to reduce interest rates. Um, certainly in my opinion, um, it's hopefully sooner rather than later. Um, but some, some of their thinking is likely to be conditioned by the situation in the Middle East, um, particularly the Red Sea trade route. Um, so there are still, there are still potential issues that, that uh, could cause us to, 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 to lose a bit of impetus. Um, the, past, the past four years have, have really pushed against the boundaries of what the construction industry once perceived to be normal. Um, <laughs> although some stability seems to be returning to construction, the likelihood is that, that 2024 this year will still be a difficult year, um, but perhaps not quite as bad as we've become accustomed to over the last few years. So in conclusion, um, what are we saying? Well, total output is fallen, falling, um, which is largely driven by a decline in new work. Um, with the growth sector over the last few years, R&M, repair and maintenance work also beginning to level out. So demand's looking uh, a little bit tenuous. Um, Housing in particular continues to be a drag on sector output growth, although some recovery is forecast later this year. Material costs are falling for the first time since the onset of the pandemic. Labour costs are increasing, but expected to peak early in 2024 and then return to trend. Overall, costs and prices are forecast to be relatively benign for the first time since the beginning of the decade. So after a difficult few years, it seems that we may have turned a corner, although um, much will depend on the timing of any interest rate cuts, the outcome of the election and the ongoing situation in the Middle East. So that ends um, today's slide presentation. Um, and hopefully you'll agree that that is a much more positive outlook um, certainly in the, 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 the previous few we did last year. Um, let's, let's make a start on, on, on the, on the Q&A. Um, so the first question is, um, <laughs> are, are you optimistic about the future for construction? Um, I think clearly 2024 won't be without its challenges, um, but construction has proved to be uh, a resilient industry and will we'll no doubt 
benefit from a more stable environment through through this year. Um, much, having said that, much will depend on the cost of borrowing and the timing of any interest rate cuts. But given the recessionary pressures building in both the wider economy um, and the construction sector, I'd, I'd be very surprised if the, if the Bank of England don't start cutting rates sooner rather than later. Um, indeed, I mean, some of, the, some of the mortgage companies have already started to bring their lending rates down. So I think this is the start of a trend um, that, that, well, I certainly hope um, that it's the start of a trend that we'll see play out over the, over the next few months. Uh, another question, um, which is another good one. What's happened to the infrastructure pipeline? Um, well, we, we were told in the spring budget last year uh, that a review of the construction and infrastructure pipeline would be published in, in, in the autumn of, of 2023, um, but have yet to see anything from the government um, in, in terms of, of commitment to the pipeline. Um, and indeed, the whole, whole point of the pipeline was to provide a level of certainty of upcoming projects um, to, to allow the supply chain to, to plan and, and resource for, for that future demand. Um, we're, we're, we're now in a situation where the supply side is unsure of, of, of future demand levels uh, and therefore can't plan appropriately. Um, certainly from my perspective, the pipeline needs to be confirmed uh, by, the, by the government as, as soon as possible um, to, to avoid any future capacity issues. Um, so the next question, will, will the Bank of England reduce the, the, the cost of borrowing? Um, given various pressures, I suspect the answer is yes. Um, but the real question, I think, is, is by how much and, and when. Um, I mean, a full, a full blown recession and, and we're we're not actually in recession yet, but we're teetering on, on, on the brink. We've certainly got very low growth um, and what can best be described as, as, as a stagnant economy. Um, a full blown recession in what is an election year uh, would not would not be a good look for the, for the current government. So I, I suspect there, even though the bank's independent, I suspect there will be some pressure applied um, now that inflation appears to be under, under control. So, going back to the question, I suspect, yeah, the bank will reduce the cost of borrowing, but we, we need it to be significant and probably fairly soon. Um, next question. Is, is the election likely to stall spending plans? Um, well, the short answer is yes, it probably will. Um, there'll, there'll likely be a period of transition, um, certainly if the government changes. Um, so spending will probably stall as the new government gets up to speed uh, with, with their commitments and, um, and, and their plans for, for going forward. So that's one of the reasons why I've been, I, I had a couple of cautions through the presentation. Um, and it, it's not just elections in the UK, um, obviously there are elections in the US uh, and also I think around, it's quite amazing actually, around 50 I think across, across the world. Um, so yeah, it's, it's definitely an election year for sure. Um, next question, has the number of insolvencies impacted the industry's capacity to deliver? Um, yeah, I think that's a good question. I mean, as, 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 as we anticipated last year, um, we've We've certainly been hearing anecdotal evidence um, that capacity uh, to deliver contracts has been affected by the high rise of insolvencies. Um, and I, I think that was mentioned in the, in the panel members' comments. Um, the, the total number of construction firms that became insolvent last year uh, was over 4,000. Um, and that's an increase of of around 8% on the insolvencies that were recorded in 2022. 
Um, it does appear to, to have slowed, so growth, growth in insolvencies seems to have slowed. Um, and it wasn't just general building firms. I think that's an important distinction. Um, it, it appeared to be that specialists, specialist firms in the industry were, were, were affected more um, than general building. Um, and in particular, mechanical and electrical firms. Um, and they were found to be particularly vulnerable um, because they didn't have the means to diversify into, into, into other areas. Um, so, so they were at greater risk. Um, and I think that was also the problems with some specialist engineering firms, so ground st stabilization firms and, and, and piling businesses. Um, so I think obviously if you're, if you're a general builder or civil builder, then you can switch into, in, into different specialisms. But um, yeah, I think for, for those real specialists, um, they're, they're, uh, they're sort of trapped in, in, in their sector. Um, but this is, it's certainly um, an emerging trend um, that, that we'll need to, to monitor in 2024. Because um, obviously if you take firms out of the, out of the sector, um, that could really have an impact um, on, on the delivery of projects going forward. So that, that ends today's webinar. Uh, many, many thanks for joining. Um, all in all, uh, a much more positive, optimistic uh, and upbeat outlook for construction, certainly uh, compared to the recent past. Um, at the next webinar, we can, we can see if that optimism uh, was well founded or not or not <laughs> um, so hopefully see you then <laughs>